Welcome, one more day to life in Armonia. It's a peaceful, serene afternoon, around 4 o'clock p.m. And I've been listening to see how many species of bird I can identify, even though I'm not an expert in birds, but by the sound you can detect some different species are hidden somewhere and it's somehow a way to increase the sensitivity because we usually are self-absorbed in our worries, thoughts, our labels. We try to capture reality by means of projection instead of reception aware without judging and when I sense in silence in this environment I can also notice the presence of the so-called civilization there is a plane above me it's somehow annoying sometimes even though I try to let go of this judgment of negativity we think the so-called nature is peaceful or harmonious but nature is very destructive as well especially in this planet where things went high war they were completely in a way which is not meant to be but since we are here we have a function we are not part of this nature fully when we come from the tree of lives in the tree of lives we harmonize reconcile from unity the true master is the one the holy one even master issue said don't call me master don't call anyone master because only one is the master and i think that's beautiful because that summarizes the whole teaching which is becoming receptive to the light of the Holy One, which is donating the absolute beingness so we can develop an harmonious personality full of life, love, vitality and grow as expressions of the tree of lives with the Holy One in the core, in our center. As you know, this is the main idea of this channel, if you have been following. I have another channel where all these teachings were even more expanded in Armonia. I used to publish videos in English there. I publish videos in Spanish now in that channel. I left this one for the English version. There is another channel called Vital in Armonia. I leave the links down below so you have an idea. And as some of you already know, this channel has the aim of reconnecting with the lost branches of the Tree of Lives so we can remember why we are here. This information is not for everyone. Some people come from the Tree of Knowledge and they will become angry and even violent. I've noticed that violence against some of us. And it's because truth is scary for many. But if you are listening and if you feel a deep resonance with all this, it means there is something in you which comes from the Tree of Lives, the true vine, the true genetics of abundance not the fallen genetics of our physical body. I have been um, expanding this subject recently. I wrote two articles. One is The Illusion of the Two Trees. It's still in Spanish, but if you access the link, you will find an, a simultaneous translation into English. One of my brothers of light and students told me that the other day. 
I've been publishing some classes with him. You can watch them in this channel. We were sharing our views on self-growth, on self-discovery, vital and harmonia. I offer courses of self-discovery. In a sense, it's a soul therapy course because it has different views, perspectives. I recently updated the web Vital and Harmonia, so you have more information there. And in this video, after this brief introduction, I would like to make a summary of ideas I was commenting recently in the main channel, En Harmonia. As I said, I wrote an article on the two trees, and I also recorded some videos speaking about that as well as the subject of male and female, man and woman. Because duality and deception is very subtle. And we have been not only deceived to believe we are separated in two realities, one that is somehow absolute and the other one which is physical, full of death. The tree of knowledge is dual and humanity ate from the tree of knowledge. That's why the division seems strong. But one of the main realizations is that once you start eating from the tree of lives, separation is an illusion because you can transform even your experience in the tree of knowledge and integrate back into the tree of life everything you are living. And the same goes for the distinctions between masculine, feminine, man and woman. Obviously, we are born with a body that has certain characteristics. I was born with a male body. Therefore, I am called to manifest masculine qualities so I can open myself to the development of feminine qualities in a positive way, of course. Because there are negative traits from the masculine and feminine side as well. Just to give a clear example, a man must become more attentive, more disciplined, more straight in the aims, aspirations. We must be more discerning, proactive instead of reactive active instead of passive. This will help us receive the income of true love and fulfill our true aims of life. Man is the one that must set certain goals to be fulfilled, realized. In alignment with the cosmic will, there is just one will in the universe. The rest of impulses are just desires and they cannot be regarded as will. Some people think they have will but it's just a confluence of their desires, selfish desires. Now in the case of the woman she must respect her divine femininity, femininity and that holy femininity is basically receptivity, sensitivity, beauty, gestation, nutrition, care, compassion, the qualities of love basically. Even though attention from the masculine side is also an aspect of love, you cannot have true love unless you have the ability to focus. Now, in the case of the woman, there is a more expanded awareness, which obviously leads to the development of that other side, the masculine side, because she becomes more attentive, more discerning. She fulfills her aims with a loving attitude, and this increases her beauty. You cannot have true beauty, harmonia, love, without attention, a straightforwardness, 
honesty, which are masculine qualities. Therefore, it's not a question of accentuating just one side. Man and woman, masculine and feminine, are like the trough and valley of a wave. Together, they have an immense force. They are the expression of the primordial unity, the one that reconciles all the opposites. Now, in this deceptive world, because of the illusion of the two trees, we came to believe that we have to struggle, that we have to unite with something which is external. So people seek for fulfillment, pleasure, by means of relationships of all sorts, by eating external things, by having many experiences. And this is part of the deception, because the full livelihood of our spirit comes from within. And we have to respect, obviously, that the physical body has some needs, but these needs should not become the ruler of our life. We have to be able to give priority to the true divine aims, seek for the kingdom of the Father, the primordial source, and its justice, and the rest will come on its own. That was the teaching of the Master. Once we start developing our true divine talents, then abundance flow in terms of materiality, health, spiritual connection, true joy, true bliss. Now, as soon as we dedicate our attention and start to struggle to get something we think we don't have, to get rid of circumstances we don't like, that's when we attract chaos, more struggle, because there is division in our mind. And that's the illusion of the two trees. We think, well, if I do this, I can be in a better position, in a better place, and then I will access heaven, true heaven, or then I will be able to eat from the tree of life with a true master that guides me or whatever. But the tree of life is what you really are. So it's not outside. And while I was researching about the um, idea of the two trees, I noticed something very interesting. Sometimes in ancient myths, they speak of a tree that has the roots up in heaven and the fruits down on earth. And they call that the world tree. You find that in Vedic mythology, for instance. Some even say that the Buddha, the awakened one, meditated on the body tree, symbolized by a fig tree. And he reached enlightenment there. A tree which has the roots up in heaven. Now, in other mythologies, the roots are down on the underworld, like in the Kalevala, in the Scandinavian mythology. And in that mythology there are nine worlds, some for the gods, some for humans, some for the little people, for fallen elves, and so on. And all this obviously is speaking about the different degrees of reality. But those mythologies miss the point of true reality, which in a sense not only has roots up in heaven, it has roots up in heaven and down on earth. So it's a full circle. And I think the best symbol to represent this is the Celtic tree of life, which I use, by the way, for my main channel in Harmonia. I love that symbol. I fell in love with it. You can interpret it in different ways, of course. You might think of it 
as a recycle process where the roots meet the top and the top become roots but obviously we can also think of this Celtic tree as an expression of the fullness the tree of lives in which we receive blissfulness and true conscience, intelligence, loving intelligence from the roots up in the absolute heaven, which is not really up, is everywhere when you enter the tree of life. And then you can also develop roots on your earthly experience, because if we just come from an absolute heaven as pure light beings, then we cannot develop a soul full of understanding. We might have a lot of wisdom and certain loving impulses, but unless we have experiences, we cannot see the details. We see the forest, but we cannot see the beauty of the trees, their species. The beauty of crossing darkness and overcoming pain, suffering, deception. There is a tremendous beauty in all that. And once you overcome something, you can look back. And tears come from your eyes because you realize there is something else in you. That is the soul. It's not just spirit. It's a growing soul that allows the universal heart to expand. And this is why we can have both roots dissolving the illusion of up and down, in and out. That was precisely the teaching you find in the Testament of Thomas, which gathers the saints of Master Ishu. He says, when you make of Chu one, the below like the above, the inside like the outside, when you make man and woman one, then you shall enter the kingdom, the divine primordial kingdom of the Holy Father, the source of true abundance. And this means we must reconcile all opposites. The contraries destroy themselves. Opposites reconcile and go back to their unified source. Now they come with an experience so they can give something. You can see this nuance in different aspects of the tree of life. For instance, the soul come in groups and they somehow work as a team in transcending certain negative aspects helping each other. We cannot work in isolation, we are part of a whole tree of life. Therefore, we must remain open to our communion with others. This is the way to grow, to understand deeper and deeper. And as I said, I've been expanding this subject from different points of view, because there is a war against the woman, against man. Many ideologies are coming out and they try to separate man and woman. They try to confuse the functions of the feminine and the masculine. So I expanded the subject. You can check it out in the Spanish version of the blog, but I will translate the recent articles into English and I will publish them in the music of wisdom.blogspot.com where you can already find many articles. And as I have been showing there, in this war against man and woman, there is a deception because it seems that history has been made by man, which is presented as the source of evil when the source of evil is not man, but the 
division or separation of the two principles as in the Garden of Eden when Adam was somehow made aware of his feminine side the woman she is flesh of my flesh bones of my bones he realized he had emotions and a psyche and this psychic part was the woman the feminine part of Adam whose masculine side was known as the man which is the spiritual mind the neshema the breath the inspiring breath of life that has a certain intelligence but in the story the woman got seduced by the impulses from the serpent Nahash which represents not just passional instincts from the physical reality but also certain entities that want to feed on the human soul and want to use the human soul as a vehicle for reproducing their fallen energies that's why the architects that work for the unification of nature told Adam not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and efficient a tree which is represented by the fig tree by the way the fig tree as I said is where the Buddha reached enlightenment the fig tree was cursed by master Ishu and why the fig tree what has the fig tree well the figs might represent fertility they resemble the masculine reproductive organ and precisely humanity fell when Adamic beings got trapped in the pleasures of this reality including sexuality there is no sexuality in the true reality some people speak about astral sex and all these things well in true reality there is no such thing as sexuality that's an invention of certain fallen architects to divide the souls as even Plato told in the myth containing the symposium Zeus split it up the souls that were androgynous so the androgynous beings were not the absolute being they could be split it that's why I don't believe in the perfect state of that Adamic being those beings didn't have understanding yet that's why they got into the deception of this world now in this world there is a system of feeding in which the strong feeds on the weakest and there is also an abuse of power if you notice in the story of Adam and Hava the man and the woman got seduced by the serpent and from that point onwards the woman not only had to give birth in pain but also became submitted to the man the text says the man will exert dominion over you now the man can be interpreted in different ways and obviously in an external interpretation we have a different set of cultures in which the women have been enslaved and abused by men and this led to the idea that the man is dominating that the man is bad but I think that belongs to the deception of the serpent because the man and the woman are the same being they are the spirit and the soul which have been separated by foreign alien elements which split up and they bring separation or lust for each other for instance however you cannot feel the sense of incompleteness when you find the opposite inside you might recognize yourself in the other 
but you don't try to dominate the other because it's you. So the fall is because of the illusion of separation, the illusion of this world. Remember how the woman saw this world good for taste, for the eye, and to get wisdom, Sophia. And as Proverbs 9 says, Wisdom, Sophia, built up her own house, killed her own victims, set her table, mixed her wine, her genetics. So that Sophia, or wisdom, was the intelligence some architects had, and they originally worked for the universal unification process, the yud heh hey But obviously they fell and became just Elohim, without the unificating nature represented by yud heh hey So there you find the distinction between unifying architects or beings and beings that become entities because they lose their primordial nature. So there you find the distinction between beings that work for the unificating process and entities that lost their true primordial life and became just separated entities. I don't call them beings because in order to be you must have something authentic, not artificial, like the tree of knowledge of good and efficient. In the tree of life everything is full, there is no division between masculine and feminine. Both principles are reconciled as part of an original unity or unicity, because unicity is the oneness of elements, the harmonia, which vibrates in tune with the primordial one. Therefore we have to sense that one by means of realizing its qualities. The qualities are known as Elohim, but unifying qualities are what define harmonia. The qualities of separation, contradiction, destruction are fallen Elohim, fallen powers. We can distinguish between power and force. We look for will force, not will power. Therefore, those are the main ideas that I was developing in the other channel. As I said, I will be translating the three articles into English, even though you can already access the Spanish version and get the simultaneous translation. Meanwhile, thank you very much for listening with attention. If you are interested in personal consultations on how to fulfill your true mission in life and you even wish to get engaged in some of the courses I offer, you have more information in Vital and Harmonia. And meanwhile, let's keep harmonizing our mind, heart and body, cleaning the house so we can work in harmonia with our true master, our true steward of the house, the subdelegated steward, and all the servants inside, so we can fulfill our true aim in life and express the love without limits, life without fragmentation, integral conscience and deep blissful serenity.